Hello everyone out there in the World Wide website. I'm Ben, that's Dan, and we're Hack the Dino, your fortnightly nonsense variety show. <laughs> nonsense variety. <laughs> how it works. Uh, yeah, so we're here to give you another dose of all the goings on in the world of geekdom, mostly video games, because let's face it, that's what does the numbers. Um, on this week's show, Dan and I have been playing some very popular games this week. We have. I'm going to give our thoughts on what uh, what's going on there. Our thoughts. And also the Game Awards nominees have been announced. So we're going to go through a couple of those categories and give our opinions on what we think should win and what we think actually will win. Mm. And a little bit of news as well. Some Actually some really cool rumours that have come out, which I'm very excited to talk about. Okay. But first, Dan, you yes. twitch. What? You Twitch? <laughs> I do Twitch. Twitch. You do Twitch. And when do you Twitch? Nintendo Twitch. You do. <laughs> I've been doing my uh, Twitch stream now for a while. So yep. if you guys want to join um, me on a Sunday night on Patreon. No. No. Twitch.tv Twitch. 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 backslash so Hack the Dino. I can't get my stuff together at the moment. I've just been flustered setting stuff up. Um, yeah, so come over and have a uh, check. Uh, search for Hack the Dino on Twitch and you'll see me there. I dress in a, a nice shirt and tie for it. And what have you been playing this week? What, what, coming up? Or no, no. Just, oh, like, or what, what is coming up? I don't then, know. I haven't planned it yet. All right. And what did you play <laughs> last time? Uh, I did Fallout 76. Okay. And uh, and how did you find Fallout 76? There's been a little bit of uh, a decisive, not decisive, what's the other word I'm looking for? Splintered opinion yeah, on yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, 76. Yeah, definitely has. Divisive. Divisive, that's the word. Divisive. Mm. Um, well, first off, I, I, my, my big my big plan was to, you know, play with a couple of friends, you know. Like, so, wanted to do a video of like, you know, if you haven't seen Fallout yet, this is like, check it out. This is what it's like. My first friend fell through, like, minutes before we were going to do it. And my second friend said he couldn't do it either. So, I was like, by myself. And then halfway, and then 10 minutes into the stream, suddenly my friend that I'd asked came into it. And he's like, my mic doesn't work. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my God. And then um, we couldn't understand each other. And he kept running off. And then um, I just decided that I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go the other way and bugger you. <laughs> and just like, and he was in the he was in the stream the whole time. That's why you don't have any friends, Dan. Yeah, bugger you. Yeah, and um, but yeah, so it's it's a good first up. It's a it's a Fallout game. Yeah, it's basically. It's, Does it feel like? Because some of the reactions I've been reading, I've not played it, but some of the reactions I've been reading online have been, it's not a Fallout game. It's like got all the, the hallmarks of a Fallout game, but just isn't Fallout. I think people just are too touchy these days. With their, what? Their stuff. On the internet? Yeah. It's nah. a Fallout game. Like, um, the owner, it's, but it's still, it's just Fallout 4. Like, the graphics aren't any better. Right. Um, if anything, they're a bit duller because it's online. I did notice you uh, in your stream, you were saying, oh, look. That uh, that uh, the imaging hasn't even popped up yet. Yeah, the rendering. Um, I haven't I haven't played it since there. So you got the game. I got the game on like whatever day it came. I I got it, and it was a forty seven gig download. Oof. And I played it for two days, and I thought oh, I'll give it a go. You know, off like off stream. Went on there um yesterday or the day before. Another forty seven gig download has popped up. The second patch. Wow. Jesus. And I looked it up. I went, what could it possibly be? You know, like, like it's redone the whole game. Just a new game. <laughs> and then there, and there was a lot of notes from Fallout on their twi- Twitch, Twitter, Twitter. So many twits. Yeah. Uh, twits. Out there. There's two right here. Yeah. Twits. Um, Roll doll. Um, yeah. And they were going like, oh yeah, we know it's a big, big update, but like we feel we, we fixed it up. And I looked at the patch notes and it was just like, there was, there was not that much change. <laughs> and I'm like, so I, I haven't even bothered to do it because I was right near the end of my download yep. limit for the month. I was like, well, I'll just wait until like until the rollover. Yeah, but how did you find playing it? Like, is it um, fun? Is it? Everyone was complaining that it was like that they they thought the world felt really empty. Well, you'd expect there, that if there's a no, but like there's, fallout. There's no NPCs in it. Yeah, so this is what I found really cool. Uh, listening to other people talk, there's been some YouTubers, because there's no NPCs, have taken it upon themselves to be NPCs. Ooh. So I forget the YouTuber's name, but there was one who uh, set up a camp right outside the Fallout shelter. So it's the first thing you see when you come out of the shelter. <laughs> and he... Uh, talks to you. He talks to you. And he set, he set up a, a forge and he uh, gives them a gun and gives them a health pack and says, oh, here you go. You're probably your best bets to go over here. And he just does that. That's the Whenever he logs on, he, he's and an NPC. And you, and you know what? That's heaps good. Like, it's really and you cool. you know what you can't do what that in? Any other Fallout game. Yeah. But I mean, this guy took it upon himself to do that. I don't know whether it was Bethesda's idea. Uh, it doesn't even matter. You can do it. That's the point. Yeah, that, you can do stuff point. like that. You can set up... 
a base with a shop and people can come and like shop with you and stuff like that. Like Now, have you found anyone who's just wanted to go trigger happy? Um, no, no one's ever shot me. Really? No, the, the whole time I was in there. My complaints are with the gamer. Here's my yep, complaint. Yep, hit me. Many a true nerd. Many a true many nerd? Many a true nerd is the YouTuber. Who oh, many a true nerd. Helping you out people. As Maybe we've got some footage up here of many yeah, a true nerd. I'll show it off a Being bit. a good, good, good boy. Because that's classic. We'll tag you in the video. When You're welcome. My fridge just started going. <laughs> Gotta get some mics so on it. Oh, good. I'm sure that's fine. Let's move it off. Oh, I clunk, clunk, clunk. I could have done that a lot more. Sorry, uh, <laughs> in Japan, they're uh, very... Uh, they have like, very loud fridges. M meticulous about their fridges. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, my problems with the games are, number one, the textures didn't load. But as I, as I said, I don't know if this has been fixed in the patch. I believe it should have. It, that should be the first thing they fix. Like, well, I mean, if you're releasing a game, surely one of the first things besides will it power on is... Are there textures? Are there textures? <laughs> <laughs> is it just a bunch of grey blocks everywhere? Yeah, so some of the buildings are just giant grey blocks. Really? Uh, it, like in my, in my uh, yeah, they do eventually load, but like it's that's, a while. That's but it only this isn't this isn't an indie studio either. Like if this was an indie studio, yeah, okay. But this is Bethesda. <laughs> but this is a triple A studio, and they're they're doing non rendered build. That's inexcusable. So I'm not, but I'm not going to complain. About that anymore, or any of those little technical traits? That's I, not I, a little I, technical thing. No, but I'm pretty sure it, 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 that that has to be fixed in that like. But it shouldn't have to. That, that yeah, should true. be ready to go. <laughs> yeah, true. They got the better. To, they had a better for people to come in and see. Surely one of the first things they'd fix is, oh, hang on, that building is a giant grey block like we used to have in primary school. And they must have let's put they, some windows on that. They must have noticed it as well because yeah. like everyone's seen it. That that, kind it's of thing. ridiculous. That's inexcusable. Anyway, but, um, continue. The things I do like about where I think are overarching things that, as I said, people were complaining there was no NPCs. Therefore, they thought the world felt empty and because you don't get missions from NPCs. Yeah. You get missions from like, you have your, 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 what are they called? Vault Overseer has gone out before you. Right. And you're following her footsteps. And so she's leaving notes and audio cassettes behind. Like saying what like she says, I'm at this point now. I'm going to go over here and do this. When you get to this point, you should do this, and um, and I'm finding this actually better, like how you get the missions and than normal Fallout. Because the thing I didn't like about Fallout is there was all that dialogue options and stuff, and I used to end up skipping it and and whatever and <laughs> stuff like that. But in this one, Skip you get end. you get you get your audio tape, and then you just listen to it and you just keep playing and you're just listening to it. So. You, Every bit of dialogue in the game you get and you hear. So you get the stories of all these people because they're just playing and they're not stopping you from playing the game. So you keep fighting stuff and you can still hear them saying like, oh, you go do this and that. And but do you, like when I'm listening to a podcast, for example, if I'm doing something else, the podcast sort of becomes just a drone in my ears, like a couple of voices in my ears and I don't actually remember what they've been saying. Yeah, that can happen. And especially when you're playing with people and everyone's like... You know, so you'd be playing with a couple of people and they're talking and then they're, they're all going, hey, do you want to go over there on that? And you're like, dude, I'm trying to listen to this tape. Just shut up for a sec. <laughs> like, but playing it single player, I didn't ever find it always like uh, empty. I actually found it more full than the other ones because I used to skip all the dialogue and this one I can't. So I still get more no matter what. And if, if you don't know what you're doing, you still got your mission logs and stuff like, you know, you're mm. like saying where to go and, wh and what you're doing and stuff like that. So what are you doing? I was trying to be discreet. Stop, stop touching my mic rod. For, the, for the, those of you listening to the podcast, I just had to move uh, Dan's shaft. It's because I keep running away and getting excited at all that. Apart from that, um, with hanging out with people, it's very, very fun. Yeah. Right? You can't argue with like going like, with a bunch of people across. I have done it since like the, the stream. Um, it, it's fun. You get in there, you all talk to each other, you're like, let's go over there. Because there's really hard spots. Really hard spots. You come across that giant sloth man yet? No. Ooh. Oh, dude, it's big. He's what? a scary looking boy. Sloth man? There sloth is, man. There is a moth, moth man. man. There's a cro yeah. yeah, there. I found a... Um, my character is the best looking Fallout character I've ever had. I found a ritual mask, which is a, a hood with a skull on the front, and they've wired antlers onto it oh. and that's my character and i'm like this is the best i'm never getting rid of this mask ever <laughs> like because you come up there like you know everyone is looking all cool and that and then kind of, and i've got like old priest robes on as well nice so i just come up and i'm this like grim reaper like character <laughs> with a gun and like horns and people are like, people are like ew oh, oh really? yeah it's dope 
Is yeah, that, that is that dance? That's so cool. Oh wow. Oh my god. Yeah. That's I'm assuming there'll be footage of that up. Yeah, I, that's great. I don't know what you use it for, but yeah. But I found it in a cult where they were worshiping on the walls this giant moth. I actually saw that in your stream. Yeah, that looked it, pretty cool. Yeah. There's, so there's all cool. There's so many cool spots in there as well. There's better spots I think than than other fallouts. It seems more terrain um, ed, on, on, undulating, whatever it's called. Is that the right word? Up hilly. And, up and hilly. It's more hilly. <laughs> it's more hilly though, I feel than the other fallouts. Where the other fallouts were quite. Flat. I mean, four was mm. getting hilly, but this one's like quite everywhere. Like, mm. um, and I mean, I've only touched the surface. Like, I've only scratched. Like, but I, I love like just the tr the location and the camp. That's a cool thing. So you can set up a camp, and then it's really hard to get your camp good, kind of thing. So you have to like, yeah. How much like Minecraft is it? Yeah, there's, there's heaps. Well, there, it's not just like Minecraft. It's not as easy as Minecraft where they like go get some dirt and a wood. You have to like, <laughs> you have to go get like. You know, to make the smallest things, you have to find, like, rubber and stuff like that. So you have to find something, pull it apart, get rubber out of it, and then make something out of this stuff. So making it really feel, feels like you're really making And there were so many times, because you have to eat and you have to drink. I got, See, no. I, See, no, I didn't no, no, no. like it at first, yeah. but then once you get on top of it, you feel really... Can you die of starvation? No, it just more makes it so your, your AP, uh, so you're like, like you're running, your stamina goes to half. Okay, and then I think you still you start doing weird stuff and, and stuff like that, and um, but I got dysentery for a, uh, in, in a, <laughs> for a while, and then he went and played Fallout. Yeah, um, but yeah, you get it from it. So so it it makes sense. Like I got dysentery from eating old raw food and stuff like that, and then like when you get dysentery, yeah yeah your water level just goes down really fast because you you just put you just pooping out water all the time <laughs> so you can you can get cures for these things or Do you, really you can just... puke, poop out water though or is it just sort of like um... fall out get it <laughs> god damn it fall out 76 <laughs> um god damn oh I lost bed no yeah so but so you can you can you can find cures good. for these certain diseases or you can just wait them out like they, they it says up there you, you have just wait them out you have just like the real world yeah oh, you know it says you have dysentery for 15 minutes like and then you can look at it. Man, why can't that be like the real world? Yeah, that's a rough fifteen minutes. But though. it's got um, it's got it's got weather effects. You'd know. <laughs> which I'm not sure any fallouts had weather effects. So it rains every now and then, stuff like that. Day and night cycle. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the other ones had that. I can't yeah, remember. I can't remember from four if there was rain or not. So how does uh, it compare to the other Fallout games? Um, like what's your favorite Fallout game? Three. Okay, and, and how does it compare to three? Oh, it's, yeah, it's not as good as that. Not as good as no, that. No, no, no. It, it, but it's still a Fallout game, and it's still online, and it's still you got your twenty five people, in there. and as I said, I'm always coming across people. Yep. Um, all the time. I don't talk to them though. I'm a bit of a lone dude. I get scared when people like, even like talk. To, speak so to you me. get scared? I just hate people. No, <laughs> I get I get scared when people speak to me on my, on my own stream. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so that, Twitch TV backslash yeah, back the dino. It comes scare me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think the color. Colors are better in this one a lot. There's a lot of um because it's set. It's not set too far into the future. It's only set eighty years after the fall after the the nukes gone off. Yep. So stuff hasn't progressed into too like like the old fallouts were very just like brown and grey because there's nothing left. Where there's there's still colors. There's still stuff that's still fine because right. it's only eighty years and stuff. Big blue buildings, which is like oh that's nice. The actual colors in Fallout, and it's cool because you're seeing things in this one. Which clearly you know evolve later into the other stuff that you've played in the other games, but it's earlier. So you're like, ah, oh. so that's what they were first, and then they turned into those things. And Have you come across any of the infamous Bethesda glitches? Um, because really Bethesda's known for uh, well, not rendering well, if, if, buildings. If you, if, if you watch the stream. At some stage, I go into a hospital, and for some reason, you know are those um, air canisters that you plug up to people, you know, the, so they can breathe, those, like, yes. canisters? Yep. Oxygen and they're tank. on yep. oxygen tanks, and they're on, like, the trolleys. All of them in the level, for some reason, were just in the air sideways floating. <laughs> like, all of just like, that item. There was a bunch of them uh, in every room. And then, like, as soon as you touched it, it just fell down. That's like, awesome. I mean, See, that kind of stuff's really, really cool. But I've, I again, like read reports about a guy um, playing... And it had just booted him from the server. And because he didn't save, all the progress he'd done for the past 45 minutes or something, gone. Well, my, my, it like his camp was gone and it was just all gone. Yeah, and but it, it auto-saves so often. 
Like, how did he? I I don't know, but like his main complaint was that he got booted. For, like this guy's a, a games journalist as well. I was reading on, a, on another site, and he was furious at it. Um, and you know, I don't like sites that give games scores. I prefer yeah, people yeah. to talk about it and say what was good, what was bad. But I will say that IGN gave it a five. Oof. See, it's it, it's yeah. worth <laughs> it's worth more than that. Like. I think that, but the, have you seen like the 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 viewer ratings online are like the Metacritic scores? And yeah, and stuff like that. It's like four out of five and stuff like that. Because it, no matter how you look at it, it's heaps fun. Yeah, like the glitches aside, textures not loading aside, it because they'll fix that. And I understand. I don't even know why they bought it out so early. They didn't have to. No one knew it was coming out. No one thought. Oh, well, they had the better test, and then uh, it was out like two weeks later. Yeah, something like that. That yeah. that seems ridiculous. That ba- that's ba- not a beta. better. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> better? They had, they had a better. Better by better. I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, they had a test and it came out two weeks later. That's not enough time to go, okay, this, 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 this. All right, that's some good feedback. We'll go and fix it. I don't think that was a beta test, eh? Nah. I just think they called it beta. I it think- was called break it early. Yep. Something, something. Yep. Tear yeah. Tear it yeah. apart. I don't know. It was, it was something. Well, that. Yeah, a beta should be months before it. Yeah. But or that wasn't at, so, least, at least four weeks. It was more of a marketing gimmick than it was anything yeah. else. So don't call it a beta. Call it a demo. It should have almost don't been... call it a beta. <laughs> <laughs> it should have almost been like okay, we've announced it, and it, two weeks after they've announced it, then the beta happens. Yeah, and then you have six weeks to really break it down. Render some buildings. Yeah, perfect blue buildings. Anyway, cannon crows. So, <laughs> uh, you were happy that you purchased it, or are you going to go into a GameStop and uh, nah. destroy the place? Yeah, I'm going to go to a GameStop. I'm going to get a ticket Buy to a America. Fly. Just remember, sixty percent of our listeners and viewers are from America. Oh so yeah, I'm, I'm skewing. Yeah. Nah, nah. I I'm like playing it. to the public. At the moment, I'm playing God of War, Fallout <laughs> 76, and I just bought Spider Man. Hell yeah, uh, and Red Dead. Oh, and I'm playing... Yeah, I don't know if I'll play it again. Um, <laughs> I, I gave it a decent go, though. Yeah, you I, did. Seriously, I, I played it for a couple of days. Um, and I really liked it, but... No, no, I've, it's still Fallout. It's like... Well, Red Dead's Fallout. <laughs> no, no, Fallout, it, Fallout, Fallout. Oh, okay. Fallout 6. You still start off with a stick hitting a bug, and by the end, you're a walking tank. And that's all I want. Yeah. Like, I want to, like... And I want to explore. And this the exploring in this is great, because you care about finding stuff. You're like, I need water. I need to find, and you find dirty water, you're like, great, now I have to boil this water so I can actually drink it because I'm so thirsty. And oh, it sounds like fun. It does feel like, feel like fun. It feels like it feels like a post-apocalyptic game, is, which is what why you're playing it. Yeah. If you don't want to scavenge and find stuff, don't yeah. play that game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, scavenging and finding stuff, I've been playing Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Ooh. Uh, See, I'm going to say heaps in this part of it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I picked it up on the day it was released. I got the combo pack with the little uh, Pokeball Joy-Con. Mm. Um, so, first thing about this little Joy-Con, I should have brought it. It's really small. Is it tiny? Like, it's it like, is tiny. It's it like is as big this as big. Mics. Oh, my God. Yeah. And when you say this uh, big to the podcast, people, it's about as big as a golf ball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, but certainly ball. under under the uh, tennis ball. <laughs> a big golf ball? Yeah. <laughs> One of them big you golf know, balls. extra golf balls. <laughs> uh, so if you're a, a full-grown man like me playing a kid's game, your hand does sort of cramp up after a bit. But thankfully, I found a way to sort of angle it so it, it, it's not going... Ah! Um, that's the sound the Pokemon Crab makes claw. when you throw your balls <laughs> at their face. Uh, so that's... you know It took a little while to get used to. Um, there's not any really clear instructions on how to use it. Like, to start off with, I didn't realise there was two buttons... <laughs> There's one at the top. Of yeah, the one the there's, there's like a little soft ah. button on the top. Yeah, and then uh, in order to get to the menu, you have to shake it, um, which, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, stop it, Dan. <laughs> uh, podcast listeners, you can imagine the symbol that Dan was making. Symbol? With his, the symbol. Action. Action, whatever. Hi, the, I the, the speak symbol. the good words. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, slowly I got used to that. It's very uh, Pokemon Go-esque when you go to capture the Pokemon, which I didn't mind that much. Um, I actually really like having your traditional battles uh, as an RPG or in the RPG manner that you usually have with the Pokemon games and having uh, the Pokemon Go mechanics in order to capture the Pokemon. It's it's a nice break. Um, Pokemon games came to a point when you were playing them, it always felt like grinding at a certain point. Uh, with 
the sort of uh, two different types of styles, you can go and capture Pokemon like Pokemon Go, like throw the Pokeballs without battling. Super and then quick. Yeah. And do you, do you use your Pokeball controller and just kind of go like that? Yeah, so you need to. Like even if you use the Joy-Con, you have to hold it up like this and you have to throw it at the screen. What if you just want to play it holding it like a normal controller? You can. Like PSP. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah, you can, but you have to press hold the A button and press A. So you can play it in handheld mode. Yeah, cool. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying... It sort of breaks up the grinding. So if you're trying to get to the next your Pokemon to the next level, so they can defeat the boss a little bit more, um, you need to go and either capture Pokemon, which is the Pokemon Go mechanics, or you can do the traditional battling with trainers. Um, and that I thought was really really cool. I enjoyed that. Uh, the one thing I loved was having the Pokemon pop up in the real world. It's like best in the over uh, overworld map instead of like in traditional Pokemon games where you're just walking through some gla- uh, glass. Glass. <laughs> that oh ra- my god! I'm like, a hardcore Pokemon trainer. Uh, they're like random encounters, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yes. But in the traditional Game Boy games and the DS games, you wouldn't be able to see when a Pokemon's about to attack you when you're walking through grass or walking through a cave. In this game, they pop up and you can just walk around them if you want. Um, and it's so good. It took them a while. Yeah, it really did. Uh, I really hope that this stays for the next game that we're going to get in November next year, the Gen 8 one. Um, it's cool. It's fun. It's super easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Is it easy? Oh, yeah. But you're, you play it for 10 minutes and any Pokemon you've caught are basically evolving to their second evolution or like level 12. Yeah, so the original Pokemon Red and Pokemon Yellow, you got the experience share sort of after the first or second gym. So if you wanted to level up your Pokemon evenly, you had to switch them in and out during a battle and there was a little bit of mechanics there. Yeah, it was a bit arduous, but hey, that's how it was. Um, in this one? This game, they've, you've got the experience share right from the start and it just levels up all your Pokemon. So uh, they all get the same amount of X- XP? Yeah. Uh, well, the one in battle gets double. And then the rest get half of that. What if one dies in battle? Does it get nothing? Nothing. Cool. Um, no, it faints. doesn't die. It dies. <laughs> it's gone forever. That's a, another uh, Nuzlocke re- type challenge. Um, so your starter Pokemon, which is either a Pikachu or an Eevee, is so freaking OP. Oh. Which one did you get? Oh, I got Pikachu. Yeah, I'd get Pikachu. My daughter got Eevee. Eevee's I got Eevee. Uh, mm. So they are uh, perfect IV Pokemon. Uh, now, IV is sort of like the, the meta game. intravenous drip? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, what is it, internal values or something like that? Something like that. Um, but it, it's basically how quickly they'll grow and how powerful they are. And you pick a uh, uh, Your starter Pokemon, no matter what you get, has perfect IVs. Does it's it have 100%. Ryan Reynolds' voice? Yes. In fact, Ryan Reynolds is in the game as Pikachu. You don't have a Pikachu. It's just Ryan Reynolds walking around just going, hey, man, what are we doing? Can you believe they're paying me money for this? Um that movie looks awesome, by the way. Yeah, oh, we'll, yeah. Let's talk about that later. <laughs> Dino More. Yep. Yes. Dino More. Yep. Check Pikachu. <laughs> uh, yeah. They level up help heaps fast. Heaps fast. Too fast. Too fast. Like, yes. like too you easy. Don't, you don't even get any satisfaction out of it. It's like, oh, it's done again. That, like, was, that was a bit of what I felt when I was doing it. It's like an entry-level kids game. Well, I mean, they all are. Like, I can't kids remember... Kids are good at games, though. I can't remember uh, Pokemon ever really being an overly challenging game. Like, it's more about the collecting than it is really the battling. And, and if you want to get sure. into the battling, it's more the meta game and after game where you're really going to be put to your test. Surely s- some of those in, near the end of the game fights must have needed a fair bit of heavy strategy. Well, they were when I first played uh, Pokemon Red and Blue. And I think I spoke about this in the Nostalgia episode. Uh, I didn't realize you could use revives and potions <laughs> during battles. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just went through and, oh, I'm dead again. So I just had to keep on grinding until I had enough to did, defeat the did League you, did you Were you getting angry at that or did you feel like it was a wicked challenge? Well, see, I'd never played an RPG before, so I had no idea. I thought, oh, it's just the game. It's a hard game. That's classic. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I did that with... um. I did that with, oh, what's that alien game called? Uh, XCOM. Yeah. I didn't XCOM, realize yeah. you could save. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so I was just trying to like, but it auto saves at the end of like every level mm. or and stuff like that. So I just was doing every level, just trying to just do it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize you could save at any point you wanted to. And I played half the game like doing it like that. Oh, it was the worst. Um, so this with your perfect IV Pokemon at the start, if you use that, it, it's pretty easy. Then those Pokemon can learn different types of moves, which help you. So usually, traditionally, if you've got like a, a fire type Pokemon, uh, it can only learn fire or ground type moves. Sometimes flying, sometimes dragging, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. not you know 
uh, core moves. Like Pikachu can uh, learn a water move, a fighting move, an electric move. Um, Eevee can learn a heap of moves, and it just makes those gym battles a lot easier because the gym trainers each have a gimmick or a theme. So Lieutenant Surge is a thunder or an electric type Pokemon trainer. Brock is a rock type trainer. So all you need to do is find the Pokemon that is strong against that type and just walk through is it. Is it obvious stuff like fire and water? Yeah. 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 What's rock? Uh, water. water. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the only one you're saying about the gym trainers. Is the, um, so are the characters like the gym trainers and the story characters and stuff like that? Yeah. Is it like well um, voice acted and stuff like that? Does it feel like an uh, anime? No, no there's only, the only voice acting you get is from Pikachu and Eevee. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's it. That's <gasps> what you get. keep doing this with Nintendo. Like, even like Zelda, as good as it was, talk. But do you know how big those audio files are? On, like they still yeah, have to fit a game on a cart. They don't have a huge amount of room. They did it on a PlayStation One. They can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not well. Um, oh, there was there's still enough voice. Like, but um. Oh, so it doesn't have like. What about the story? Like, are there like trainers that you hate and you really want to beat and see no. them go down? So the original like, one you, you know, had Blue or Gary. Uh, he's in this game. Gary. Yeah. It's not a spoiler. I he's know, in the trailer. It's really best early. name. Uh, it's really early on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's in it. it it's you know, uh, it's the same story for every single Pokemon so Blue's game. Blue's a bad ever. guy. Blue's in it. No, he was just an arrogant uh, trainer. And you Blue was red. the guy you were in one of them, wasn't no, he? No, no. Blue was the guy who you were up against. You were in red. red and blue. Yeah. So you well, were red, and he was blue. What happens when you play Pokemon Blue? Same thing. He's he was called Red or something. But the the canon they stuck to was that his name was Blue. Okay. Anyway, to make the game even easier than that. So having an OP power <laughs> Pokemon at the start. You don't even have learn. to play it. So the Pokemon has perfect IVs to start off with. Then it can learn a plethora of different type moves to make it easier. Then you can have buddy systems where uh, you have a, a default trainer come in and play two player. They can't interact with the world. It's still player one has to interact with the Pokemon and, and whatnot. But you get a second Pokemon to battle with. So then it's two against one. That seems unfair in the Pokemon battles. It, it's yeah. My my girlfriend and I were playing like that for a bit because this is her like first proper Pokemon game. Yep. And it was very quickly like, oh yeah, this is this. It's is, easy mode. This is very easy to the point where my daughter Parker was playing it, and she I was playing it with her, and then yeah. she went one player and went, "No, nah, this is too hard," and got another Joy-Con, <laughs> and I'm, you're cheating. Yeah. It's just, no, it's and I guess it's not cheating if technically it's in the game, yeah. but yeah, it's just. It's got different levels to make it easier. And I think what they're trying to do is hook that new generation. Mm. It's been 20 odd years now since Pokemon Red and Blue came out. People like me purchased it when they were 14, 15 years old. Uh, we're now old enough that we've got our own kids who are around about that age. So it's time to sort of, oh, look, here, son, here, daughter. Let's play the game that I played when I was young and get them hooked in as well. It's very good marketing from the Pokemon company. The problem is like... Um Kids are good at games. Kids love grinding. Look at for, um um what's the other one called Fortnite. Yeah, they grind the hell out of that. Like, no, you, didn't, you don't do grinding in Fortnite. No, but you just play over and over and over. That's and not over grinding and over. though. That's a match. No, you do do grinding because you get like points for playing, and then you can get costumes of that. Um, like just doing round, like, yeah. rounds. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like going in and in and in and in. Yeah. And then you get just like your daily challenge. Yeah, but like that, but that's what they want. So there's yeah. no reason to make it easy. Kids will do it. Yeah, Kids will play it. Like. They'll get good at it. I mean... And if, they, I, if it's too easy, they'll just forget about it. I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know what's in the post game. I do know there's uh, Ultra Trainers who specialize in uh, each Pokemon. So there's dark, 150 dark trainers. Uh, and they're apparently very, very hard to defeat. Nega Trainers. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so I don't know what else is in there. I'm assuming there'll be a bit more, but I'll let you know once I've finished the game. I've got all my eight badges now and on my way to the Elite Four to... Trample them, leave them in my dust with my OP Pikachu. Nice. Just the guy you started the game with. Yep. Goddamn. Do you even need any other Pokemon? Oh, yeah, I've got a Gyarados. Got a it's carp. sweet. Carp and a Trubbish. <laughs> <laughs> King Kaiju Collectibles. Nice. For many years, King Kaiju Collectibles has supported our show with lots of plastic crack. Doodads. Doodads and who Billy Jigs. Who said two dads? With two dads. King Kaiju and his two dads are here to bring you all the Godzillas. If he's not grounded by his two dads. His two dads are uh, top guys. So if you like top guys, head on into King Kaiju Collectibles. And he doesn't have a store. It's yeah, at Green Light Comics. <laughs> <laughs> but pretend it's King Kaiju Collectibles. 
Coming at you now. Not now. That would have to be the worst ad you've done ever. I tried to <laughs> think of something. Yeah. King Kaiju Collectibles. We got news? <laughs> uh, <laughs> trying to get away from it. We got news? We got nudes. We have nudes. Uh, yes, we got some news. So, go. uh, so usually by this point in the show, we've already done the news. And I just saw the time codes and I went, oh, okay, it's time for the ad. No. <laughs> uh, so we'll go through this very, very quickly. But, Marathon episode. Uh, there are some rumors doing the rounds that in 2019, that's next year's, for those of you without a calendar. Are these news rumors? That, well, this one's a rumor. Numers. Uh, Numers. 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 Microsoft are going to release a new, another Xbox One, but Probably. it won't have a disk drive. It's going to be a digital box. That worked great for the, the that PlayStation that <laughs> portable, whatever it was called. What was um, that called? The oh, the Vita. Yeah. No, no, v- PS TV. No, no, no. That what? was the Vita in the TV. That was that one. The one that clicked up from the bottom. It oh, slid. the PS Go. Was it Go? Yeah, yeah. that didn't have any cart. Yeah. Car- that was the one they have no cartridges. So, I mean, it's just a rumor. Um, rumors also circulating that if you purchase one of these, you can take your game disc into a shop to trade it in and go, here's my disc. And they go, okay, here's the code. Here's the digital code. So you can then download the game onto your, your drive. Do you know what? Um, As if go, EB wouldn't do that. Oh, of course they would. that's where they make all their games. Yeah. Have money. Yeah. I was on the, in the secondhand ones. Now they're just, people are giving them the game and they're just giving out a code. Yep. And then they just sell the game. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, it's interesting. It's definitely them throwing their hat into the let's make it Netflix, uh, type thing. But I really don't want to see, uh, the demise of physical copies of games. It no. might just be because I'm a collector and I have a problem, but, uh, yeah, just, you, you don't own anything on a cloud system. The problem with it as well, like my 360 games, like the original, you know, Xbox 360, not the original, um, Half of them I can't play anymore. None of the servers are there. Yeah. Like, mm. So, I mean, that's I've got a physical copy, but I've just got it now for pure just shelf space. Yep. Like, I can't go back when my kid's a bit old and go, oh, you want to see Battlefield 2? You know what <laughs> no. I used you know to play? Oh, yeah, you, you can run around the map by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, interesting. Um, even more interesting that that was their main selling point when they were uh, releasing info about the... Uh, Xbox One at that E3 and they had that huge backlash. Yeah, that was rough. Remember that? That was rough. Yeah. That was, that was when PlayStation literally called them out afterwards, like the day later when they had their press conference. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was always online. You had to check in every day in order to, well, you had to log on every day in order to oh, be able to yeah, play yeah, your I games. Remember. I'd forgotten about that. There was even rumors that if you're watching a film and you pay for like three people to watch the film, if a fourth person walks in, the screen would freeze That's and you right. had to pay money so that fourth person could watch it and insanity uh, like it, it was ridiculous don't yeah. get me wrong but it's interesting was any to of see, it true uh some of it was in four to five years we've come away to the well we've come to the point where now streaming isn't like a dirty word mm. and that people may actually you know for i'm um, rumors it's going to be like 200 dollars american so it's about 350 australian uh yeah, yeah and, and you get all the bad. games well no you don't get the games that's just the console Oh, I it's thought... it's still an Xbox One. It just doesn't have a disc drive. So that's weird. Eh, I don't know. It, it's a rumor. We'll mm. see if it uh, comes to fruition. And then, of course, they're going to have the Scarlet released in 2020, which is their next gen. Is it really that weird? Like I've got a Steam box. None of you guys think that's well. Weird. See, yeah. that's where it's, I think they're trying to get yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. They're just they're never going to beat Steam. No. Now that I've said that, they will. <laughs> Hang on. They'll kick Steam off of Microsoft. Off of off of the off of, off of the in, off of or their they'll off just of Windows. They'll just buy Steam. They've or been buying a lot of studios lately. Or they'll just reskin Steam, and when you play it, you're just playing Steam. Yeah. <laughs> like. uh, PlayStation announced about a week and a bit ago that they're not attending E3 in 2019. Yeah, what's that? This is after they didn't have uh, the PlayStation Expo uh, PSX this year, this year. Yeah, it's, it's just what? It's gone. Now, well, I don't know if it's gone. I don't know if it's the they changing. quit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> PlayStation's done. Packing up. You heard it here first. PlayStation's out of business. Like, it's not our business. <laughs> Nintendo just, won. They're just like, you know what? We've listened to everyone online and we've decided to shut down because everyone keeps giving us shit. So we'll just go away. Can you imagine? Then everyone they, will be happy because so much, everyone's so unhappy. Company? Everyone's so unhappy online about our stuff. We'll just stop and then they'll be happy, won't they? That would be... I'd find that pretty... Like we've a power move. Sh- we've shut down the PlayStation I don't think you no, boys are being serious. Not quite that. Like, no, if I they were think... straight up like no social media presence, nothing, and they were just silent drop release things, that'd be awesome. That's not very smart marketing, is no, it? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, no, I think what it is, they, 
I think they're gearing up for their PS5. Mm. Rumors are it's going to be, again, 2020. Um, so PS5. There's, there's, there's no point in pushing something if you, you're, you're saving everything back to release with the PS5. Like, they've easily won this generation. Um, they've, they've made their money. Um, they beat Xbox. Oh, they slaughtered them. Uh, so I really think that uh, this is them just holding back and ready to, to, to go. What are you pointing at, Braden? I have a question. Oh, or a right. comment. Okay, um, that's what that was. Hi, uh, I'm Braden. I'm having the camera. Um, do you reckon they're just trying to not get in the way of their own conference there by just building up for their own massive PS5 event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all the games that we've seen... I think Last of Us. I think uh, Last of Us Two. Sorry, I think that um, Death Stranding. Yes, thank you. It's good that you. Yeah, I got there. Do you reckon that's going to be on the. I reckon five? that's going. I think they're all going to be launch titles. I, oh man, that's. A they may pull title. a Twilight Princess and and dual release it. Oh, I'm thinking what they're going to have a Zelda game. <laughs> <laughs> they may do and an old one. <laughs> <laughs> they may do that and have like a a, a lower. Fidelity version mm. on the PS4, but I really think PS5, we're going to see Death Stranding. Uh, we're going to see Last of Us 2 and all their other really high-end games. Ghost of Tsushima, I am convinced, is a launch title for PS5. How good would that be if it was in, like, cutting back, not going to shows, not showing everything, for going basically silent on everything, yep. and then just going, like, just doing a massive... Like, like a bomb drop. Yeah, yeah. here's like, a PS5. Here's like what that, you get. Like that time Bill and Ted, like, did the, <laughs> the school talk at the end. Oh, swearing. Um, Oops, yeah, you know, it's and it's like, strike, welcome yeah. San Dimas High, and <laughs> PlayStation 5. Oh, man. And then the whole world would be like, they'll be starved for it as well. They'll yeah. be gagging for it. And then they're like, and you know what, guys? New IPs. Do you know what? No Mario, no Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine they just did all new IP it's as well. Sony walk on stage and say, no Mario. <laughs> Just hold up his head. Like, he's or either, dead. Or even like, no no bandicoots. Yeah. No no bandicoots. No Grand Theft Auto. Ooh. No Spider-Man. We're going all new IP. PS5, GTA 5 they... is going to keep on going until the end of time. Yeah, I know. Uh, I... So, yeah, I really think they're building up It wasn't up even them either. <laughs> <laughs> I really think they're building up for a massive PS5 launch. This leaves the door open for Xbox and Nintendo to really step up. Man, I just bought the Pro. <laughs> <laughs> uh so I, I, I'm interested to see what Xbox are doing because they're as well planning for the next gen with the acquisition of how many studios they have now? Seven? Oh, something I reckon Xbox is going to fade away from trying to push gaming and go in a different direction. Oh, I don't know. Like, with their, um, They've with just their, bought seven gaming studios. And with their Scarlet teaser that they had, they were like, this is going to be a beast of an engine. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to call it that, are no, they? I, no, they no, can't. So it's like the Nintendo 64 was the Ultra 64 and... Uh, Project Dolphin was the GameCube, yeah. and I, what was the Dolphin? PS3? Yeah, sorry. What was the PS3? PS3 had a dumb name. What as well. was the Star Wars called? What was that? When uh, that Blue was? Harvest. Blue Harvest. <laughs> such, such a such anyway, a, such an oyster name. On yeah. to perhaps the most startling and mind blowing news to ever come out of this quaint little program. <laughs> this is old news, but my goodness, it blew my mind when I read it during the week. It's been confirmed yeah. that BJ Blaskowitz from Wolfenstein is the father of Commander Keen and the grandfather of Doom Guy. God damn it. it sounds like they made that one up after the fact, eh? Yeah, they announced the official one and then they went, oh, let's just throw that on there as well. But no, it's confirmed. Yeah, it's insane. The devs came out and said, yeah, it's, it's 100% confirmed. These three people are... All related, which makes me think Doom 2 level something, 32 or something, you can go into a hidden room and it's just full of Commander Kings hanging from a noose. Ooh. Kind of morbid. Yeah, a bit. Um, Plus, I love Commander Keen. That was a the problem great is, game. like, Commander Keen and Doom are set in, a f- in the future in space. and Commander Keen's not. Commander Keen's present day. He just goes into space because he's a genius. Yeah, but, like, the other one's just in Nazi Germany. Yeah, so but- that's he's the father. So, in all of their canon, the Nazis won, and it all became Wolfenstein, and then the world continued on after that? Yeah. Okay. To Commander Keen, the Nazis have won? Yep. That's why he goes to space. To Mars. That makes sense. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. So, it got me thinking I'd do a little bit of investigative journalism and find out what other characters are related 
within the gaming world. I just read the first one. Oh my god, that's a drop bomb drop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that Cranky Kong is related to Donkey Kong? In fact, <laughs> The whole Did you know? This, 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 this. Are you being serious, Braden? I don't know if you're. No, no, I'm being, like this is hilarious. You, did you know this though? Yes. That Cranky Kong is in fact the original Donkey Kong. Bum bum bum. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's rubbish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's another one for you. Did you know these characters are related? Did you know Solid Snake, Big Boss, and Liquid? Are related. Are the same person. <laughs> well, are they? Because it was just like DNA. It wasn't one of them was a clone. clone. I think one of them was the arm of the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Liquid's the the brother. But yeah, they're all they're somehow related. Yeah, there's blood there. Yeah, there is. This one I legitimately didn't know because I didn't finish this game. But uh, did you know, Travis from No More Heroes, and uh, is it Gene? Yeah. Gene. <laughs> okay, so uh, finish it <laughs> in the game. Jean starts off as, uh, like, she's the antagonist. Hmm. Uh, but it's it's hinted at that they were an item at some point, and, and they had some sexy time. Uh, and then when you come up for the final battle, apparently you can skip through her final speech revealing her plans and everything. But within that speech, it's revealed that she's his half-sibling. Oops. They, they got the same dad. Oop. Oop. Dun dun da da dun dun da da dun dun. Hey 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 hey! We'll get flagged. Don't. Yeah, no, <laughs> Last one. Last one. Here we go. Did you know? Hold on to your butts. Did you know the Pokemon known as Trubbish, which is just a big bag of garbage with eyes, is related to Luigi because Luigi's nothing but trash. Right. You, you Strong spe- punchline. You, you stayed up all night writing that one, didn't you? I really did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it got the reaction I was hoping for. <laughs> Perfect. What, complete the, silence. What the wah, wah, wah. No. The the raucous laughter of our live studio audience. I think I can hear them from yeah. from uh Unfortunately, we from had Adelaide to- Oval where they're all watching the simulcast. Give us a big thumbs up on the YouTube video if you like that joke. We had to edit it out of the actual podcast. That's right, they were just too loud. Yeah, peaking, you know. <laughs> anyway, we've got a Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash hack the dino. We mentioned before that we uh, do a monthly Dino More, which is another nonsense show where we talk about movies and we talk about everything. We talked about ghost hunting last time. That was ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I uh, Because it's an 18 plus show, we use the swears. Uh, you can get access to that for as little as $10 a month if you want to join in on the live show or for as little as $3 a month if you just want the audio version. Or... You can just wait until the end of the month and get it for free because, you know, we're not that stingy. We appreciate the support of all our lovely Patreons who Braden has put just here. Woo! Uh, on, on the Nintendo? Yes, on this Nintendo. This NES. On the anus. 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 Uh, Dan's anus. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird seeing one of these in Japan, actually. Yeah. I've Mandela. lost the train of my thought. Patreon, give there us money. Go. We love you. I love you too. All right. Topic of the show. Wow, we're forty three minutes in and we're getting to the topic of the show now. Big show. Okay, we're gonna skip we're gonna we're gonna burn through this. We can this. get through this. We can get through this. Okay. <laughs> Game Awards nominees have been announced for 2018. Mm. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is read out the uh, no, the award, uh, what it is, and the games that have been nominated for that award. Uh, we will give our thoughts on who is going to win and uh, who we think should win. Or thereabouts. This is a long section. We can get through this. Oh, we'll just... We'll I don't want to up. rush it. All right, so Game of the Year, which recognises the game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. So these have all been announced officially. Yeah, yeah, so you can go to the thegameawards.com and vote for these. Everyone can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Game of the Year, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, mm. Celeste, God of War, Spider-Man, Monster Hunter World, or Red Dead Redemption 2. What do you think? Uh, Should we say it at the same time? No, we shouldn't. So give us... <laughs> what? Two, it'll three. save time. <laughs> so, no, just give me who you think will win and then wh- who you would like to win. Uh, I think Red Dead's going to win. Really? Yep. And I want God of War to win. God of War! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my voice cracked. Mortal Kombat! Assassin's Creed Odyssey is rubbish. <laughs> okay. I've, I've got that from so many Assassin's Creed fans that like, I know. And they're just like, nah, they're like, nah. Not that one. It gets repetitive and boring really fast, I reckon. Right. Ooh. 
Um, but I haven't played Spider Man yet, so okay. I, I've got it over there. Look, Spider Man is a filled good up. game. I don't think it, it, it's it's a great game. It's worth having. I don't think it's game of the year. I absolutely love purely Spider-Man. from the uncanny valley point of view. Yeah, like Aunt May's face just freaks me the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> really? If, if yeah, exactly. And if you compare that to the likes of Red Dead and God of War, yeah, like so. It's a bit of. I'm gonna go God of War and God of War. I want God of War to win, and I think God of War will take it because it's just such an enthralling game. It's just beautifully written, and it's. I personally think it's the first uh, leap into this new genre of games where they are the next movie. They are the next artistic art form, whatever, yep. uh, that will uh, sort of push narrative to the next uh, level. And you got a war has got heaps more exploration than I thought it was going to have. Yeah. It's good, eh? Like, there's so much to do that you can just get off the track, but not too off the Braden, track, yeah. like Red Dead. We're going to uh, leave Dino more for your picks, okay? Just okay. otherwise we're going to... So if you want to hear Braden's picks, my ex- check out... My expert opinion. Dino more. Nah, uh, best, right. Best ongoing game. Outstanding development of an ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. And the nominees are Destiny 2, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege. Basically a reward for the best DLC. <laughs> um, I, I think there's no way that Fortnite's not going to win this. Yeah, yeah and Destiny 2, man. <laughs> um, no Man's Sky, I mean, the second build of that game was pretty good. Well, they're releasing another free update. Uh, it's coming out very, very soon, next Maybe. couple of weeks. Um, but I think they blew their chance. I just think Fortnite... Overwatch, eh? Overwatch no. has all those films and everything. Yeah, that's but good. Fortnite Wasn't is just... Overwatch released like years ago? Yeah, but yeah. it's ongoing. Oh, that's true. Uh, Rainbow Six? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's a shooting <laughs> game. Uh, it's Tom Clancy. I don't think there's any way Fortnite's not going to win this. Their dedication to uh, just upping their lore, uh, and it's just fun. Um yeah, Fortnite's it's almost got it like easy. they made a category so they could have Fortnite in there. Yeah, like this, and, this and has never been this has never been in a Games Award before this this category. Oh well, Jeff Healy's all about you know sort of expanding and, and getting more people in and interested in games. Um, never mind the bartender you see in the background there. Okay, best game direction, outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Uh, we've got a way out, Detroit become human. God of War, Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2. Best game direction. So a lot of people are saying, again, Red Dead Redemption. I'm going to argue against that because Red Dead Redemption is one of those games where you control the narrative. Like, you you don't have to do the storyline. You can do whatever you want. So that experience is you and you've made it. They're not actually directing you to do anything. I can that Detroit game will win it. Really? Yeah. People have been loving that game. Really? Why? why? I've it, not played it, so it's I can't. Pretty much play. best game direction. That's all it is. It's a it, you just it's a, a story based game with like yeah. and it's ridiculous as well. Yeah. Like, and it give it gives you so much. It gives it gives you all these open opportunities to do what you want, but it's still directed in an incredible way. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. It's not just like where well, Red Dead's a complete opposite of that. That's just you, like creating a story through like you riding around and you shooting do your people random and, stuff, and, and then, then you do ran- a yeah, and then yeah, you do random stuff. And then yeah, you do it, it's just it's just fetch quests in between riding around. Okay, but um, see, I'd like Spider-Man to Spider Man. I haven't played. Yeah, so Spider Man, uh, it's oh. a great game, but it it's I mean maybe it's because I read comics. It, it's all been done before. I haven't read a Spider-Man comic in ages. I friggin' loved it. And yeah. it, I still don't think it will win any of these, though. I, I think, Bless. honestly, it's between God of War and, and um, Detroit. Yeah. Best narrative. Outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. God of War. God of Maybe War. Detroit, though. No, I'm going to say God of War. I'm going to say God of War. I, I think God of War's got I, this Life one. is strange. Ooh. Have you played I it? I do like that. I don't know. I, I haven't played, played it. I haven't played it. Two. Mm. Uh, best score and music. Octopath Traveler? Are you kidding me? That's got great music. <laughs> I mean, it's chunky and, and choppy and cuts in for no reason, but man, it's great. Uh, Celeste, God of War, Spider-Man, Nino Kuni 2, Octopath Traveler, or Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, Spider-Man, I'd like to see. Uh, yeah, I can see I that. think if Spider-Man's going to win anyone, it's, it's going to be this one. It's got a, a full movie. Um... I d- you, you start swinging, and then it swells as you're swinging up through the cityscape. And it works well. It, it's really interesting. And then when you stop swinging, it just slowly fades out, and you're just left with this ambient city yeah. sound. And then you hear, help me, help me. And if you jump and go for it, the music starts to dun, swell dun, dun, up dun, again. Dun, dun. Yeah, it, it builds up so well. It's great. Yeah, I, that sounds I, great. I honestly think Spider-Man will take that one. i got to say, God of War is high contender as well, because... 
I gotta think of some of those scores in there. They're bloody nuts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, games of impact for a thought-provoking game with a profound pro-social meaning or message. Uh, so, eleven, eleven memories retold, which I haven't played. Uh, Celeste, Florence, Woo! Uh, Life is Strange Two, and The Missing. JJ Macfield and the Island of Memories. Now, full disclosure: before I go on and talk about how good Florence is, um, I do know Mountain's uh, head designer and owner uh, Ken Wong. He's a Melbourne gentleman. He's a, a friend of my partner, uh, and I did know about or a little bit about Florence before it actually came out because I went and saw Austin Wintry with him, I mean, and he told me all about it. So I just don't want people to think that I'm pushing for Florence because I, uh, you know, <laughs> have have some kind of. Oh, look at that list. I forgot to put that page in. Oh, my there notes. you go. <laughs> um, so having said that, Florence is a great game, um, but Celeste I think is just a lot more. Uh, grander in what it tries to accomplish and what it tries to do. Celeste is, for those of you who haven't played it, about the uh, sort of internal struggles of anxiety and depression and overcoming. Um, there's a part in there where you're taught breathing techniques that may or may not help you uh, when things get too rough within the game. Uh, it, it's a really great metaphor for overcoming those uh, real anxieties that, that affect a lot of people. Um, Florence, while is beautiful and just heart-rendering, it is about uh, the the creation and the uh, falling away of a relationship between two people. Um, I think it, it, it for me it goes to Celeste because they just they just capture it beautifully. Um, I'd love Florence to win because uh, Australian people represent and Ken is a freaking awesome guy. Uh, he's actually said that when he's in Adelaide next, he'll come on the show. Oh nice. yeah! So. Uh, Looking forward to that. Okay, I've got no opinion on this one. I've only played Florence. Okay. Yeah, same. So, Florence wins. Yep. <laughs> okay, best independent game. Celeste. Yeah, that's on four. Yeah, yeah. it's a great game. Uh, Dead Cells, Into the Breach, Return of Obra Dinn, or The Messenger. That Return of Obra Dinn is amazing. Now, that's the only game on here I haven't played. I've got it on my um, Steam box. So it's like, it's like a pirate game. Um, first person game, but yep. it's in green and black Game Boy colors the whole game. And oh, cool! And there's no shade. There's no shading. It's just got. It goes into like pixelation, like the shade. Oh, so it wow. looks like an old Amiga game, but it's a first person one with all wicked graphics. But it's not. So you're like playing that world in Jurassic Park. Yeah, but it's, on the Super but it's also very, 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 very story based. Oh my like, god, that's gorgeous! Yeah, that's so cool. You're going to have to... I'm wow. bringing up footage of it right now, but yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like first seeing it on for Switch? the first time. This is awesome. Oh, I don't know. It's on my Steam box. Yeah, oh. it's, it's only on PC. Oh, you have to show me that after. I want to see that. Uh, look, Celeste is going to win it. Sorry. Um, kind of bummed that Florence isn't in that one. Yeah. But I mean, Dead Cells was great. Uh, I can Dead Cells. Is, that's a really? good, good game. Cells yeah. There. I can that yeah? win. Yeah. But I mean, so The Messenger's solid... also really cool. Yeah, I haven't played that. Which one was The Messenger? The Messenger's the one where it switches between 8 bit and 16 bit. So you oh, go into the yeah, future. Yeah. So you, you're in feudal Japan and then you go into the future mm. and it goes to 16 bit. And then when you go back to the past, it goes to 8 bit. It's yeah, really, really cool. Uh, and finally, uh, these aren't all the categories. I've just chosen the ones that I think the, uh, the big hitters. Yeah. Uh, best mobile game. So, Donut County, Florence, Fortnite, PUBG, or Reigns, God of uh, God of Thrones, Game of Thrones. Uh, I really Donut want County. I really want Florence to win. Fortnite. I, I think it's such a beautiful game. I want um, Florence. Fortnite will win it. I think Fortnite will win it purely because he has to win something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but think about it. This is a game that you can play on any system available. It's the only it's game. Not a mobile game, then. Yeah. Yeah, you, you play start, it on a mobile. Did, you you didn't start to. as a mobile game. Well, I mean, it's nominated, so it is a mobile game. You play it on a mobile, therefore it's a mobile game. I really think that uh, Fortnite will take it out. It certainly won't be PUBG. What about a mo? Could it be like what about uh, Switch games? They're mobile. Yeah. No, nah, but technically it's a console hybrid. So it's a handheld mobile console. Anyway. Uh, we're going to skip for your questions we'll save them for Dino More uh, so nice. be sure to either check out the episode at the end of the month end of uh, November when it comes out uh, does, no we're filming the December one end of December uh, to see the viewer questions from this episode number 57 and we're going to go straight into Dan versus the world Ooh. Brayden Hello. come on down so usually we have a guest here 
who Dan goes up against Ooh. in Dan versus the world in order to try and beat the world and win the trophy of infinite <laughs> awesomeness, which isn't here because we're in Japan and we forgot to bring it. It's too big for our carry-on luggage. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the rules are simple for Dan versus the world. I have three songs. I will play the first five seconds of one song. Then Dan and Brayden, who represents the world, will take it in turns asking questions. After five questions each, they have an opportunity to guess. If Dan gets it right, he gets a point. If Brayden gets it right, he gets a point. If no one gets it right, it's a draw. At the moment, I think Brayden or the world is on two and Dan's on one. Yes. Okay. You're yeah, right. Woo. So here we go. Here's the first song. Dan, question number one. I thought the world always gets there. No, it's whoever I like. I think he changed it this season. <laughs> oh, okay, because I'm losing Change so much. Change it whenever I want. <laughs> um, I am the gatekeeper and you will do as I say. Dan. He's gone power hungry. What genre of video game is it? It is an RPG. Brayden. Cool. What <laughs> game console is it on? Uh, the Super Nintendo. Okay. All right. Dan. What is the main character? The main character is a boy. Of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Geez. Who would have thought? Oh. Brayden, uh, question number two. What sort of do, What sort of creatures or people do you fight? Uh, you one of fight the yeah. a wide variety of yeah, creatures. Say, yep. It's an RPG. It's an RPG. Yeah. Like, is there like a standout? Like one that's like token to them, like uh, you, you fight goblins and humans and big monsters and uh, robots uh, and yeah, jeez, everything, eh? Robots yeah, as well. It's everything. Dan, question number three: How many words are in the name? Is that is that a cheating question? No, no yeah, you can ask it. Yeah, if I don't want to answer it, then all right. Uh, two. Oh. Brayden, question number three. Mm. Such confidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're going great. Mm. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, you only represent the world. Is there, is there multiple characters you can play? Yes. Cool. Dan, question number four. I'm just going to guess. You're going to guess? I don't know. If you don't guess it right, Braden gets the point. That's all right. Uh, is it Chrono Trigger? It's Chrono Trigger. Ooh, nice. Oh, back on even. Two, two. <laughs> two, two. We're back, two apiece. Back on the even. Back on the even. Back the even train. On the even. Even train stain. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Song number two. Oh, that was a short one. <laughs> yeah, one's Dan, right question number one. What console was it on? Uh, this originally on. Uh, originally on, or what console was it on? Well, when did it come out on first? It came out on the Super Nintendo first. Okay. Right. I, I had a feeling it sounded like an in, Nintendo. You're like, what genre is it? Uh, it's an RPG. <laughs> yeah, cool, 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 cool. Dan? Cool, 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 What is the main character? Oh, these are... Oh, we need to start asking more. Yeah, I was, was going to do an... It's a boy. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, Um. can I have another five seconds? Uh, yeah, sure. sure can, for a you, clue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we can do clues. Hey, I forgot you, about the clues. Do you want five seconds or do you want a clue? I want five seconds and then I'll get a clue. You want five seconds. All right, here's your five seconds. Sure are going to get five seconds. <laughs> Great, Phil. After we hear the first five seconds again. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Right. I, got, I like that. That got interesting. Dan, question number three. Oh, I want to ask the same question, but I'm trying to think of something better. Mm. What um what what is the game developer person that made it? Uh Square. Oh. Okay. Okay. Braden, question number three. Can I have a clue? You can. Uh you've mentioned well, we've mentioned this game this episode. It should be in the notes in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, question number four. 
Um, we have, have we? Mm. Mm, without stalling for time. <laughs> yeah, that's... Because we're hard, not running over. That's the all. hard part, is trying not to just take up all this thinking time. Question number four. Right, um... What is the... Does the... I don't know. So, does the main character have a specific cool power? Yes. And... <laughs> no, you should have thought about that. <laughs> what right is in. the main character's specific cool power? Uh, he can call down lightning. Okay. Okay, question number five. Lightning, hey? Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is um, at all. Uh, I have a cryptic hint. No, it is a hint. Just a hint? Yeah. <laughs> just a real hint. Okay. Real. Um, you start off playing as this main character. Yes. But throughout the game, spoiler alert, you can actually switch him out and not play as him. Like you can finish the game without the main character in it. Hmm. Yeah, okay. well, that... Brayden, question number five. What happens if we don't get it? So, uh, the... it's a draw. No draw. one gets a point. Okay. I think it's going to be a draw. Yeah, yeah I feel like this was going to be a draw because I've got a draw a clue. Um... Have we done, like, what's the main baddie? Like, yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Do you want the baddie's name, considering that after this, Dan gets a free shot at trying to yeah, guess? Will, yeah, know. yeah, do it. All right, the main overall baddie is Lavos. Dan, <laughs> your guess. I thought it was a cafe. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I was going to have a guess. Lavos. There's nothing I know. Is I've it? Got, yeah, I've got no clue. So you each get a free guess. Like, if no. you get this wrong, yeah. it, it's anyone's ball game now. Is it the secret of mana? No. It's the only Brain. one I know. On SNES. Was it SNES? It yeah. originally appeared on the SN- SNES. However, this version isn't from the SNES version. So okay. there's a little bonus hint for you. Uh, okay. You can... um, see, I don't even know things that are on the SNES, though. That's Whoa, the thing. Yes, come on. Uh, wait. Was, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, was it Mar- Mario? No. No. It was Chrono Trigger for the DS. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> when you said mentioned on the show, did you mean just before? <laughs> Gee, oh my god. Brayden's left. That is the cheekiest <laughs> shit. Oh my god. I'm sorry, you don't remember on the 50th uh, episode where I played the Mario thing? I know. No, oh, it's Mario Brothers. No, sorry, it was from Mario Maker. God damn it. Okay, here we go. Song number three. So it's at two apiece. Here we go. Song number three. Such a jaunty tune. Mm. There we are. Dan, question number one. <laughs> it's a bugger because I know I've heard it somewhere. Dan. Probably just from the game with the four. <laughs> <laughs> question number one, Dan. Um, what company made it? Square. Is, 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 is this more or less the same game? That's his question. What do you mean? That, my question is, is this more or less the same game? I'm not going to answer that because uh, that it's gives... not a legitimate question. Okay, so that's a yes. Yeah. Um, so, Brandon, what is your question? <laughs> well, now I don't want to say what what genre of game is it. It's an RPG. Whoa. What um, console is this specific version on? PlayStation. Is this Chrono Trigger for the PS1? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I didn't want to ask console. <laughs> So dumb. Yeah. Oh, oh man, you have no idea how long I've wanted to do that for. That's good. Really though, we've been Hack the Dino, a fortnightly nonsense variety show where we talk about games and comics Rigged! and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, we're on two apiece, by the way. Dan's just gone. Uh, two apiece. But yeah, two apiece. Oh no, sorry, you won. World's yeah. on three. Oh. Damn straight. Sorry, sorry, Braden. Three. <laughs> <laughs> We've been Hack the Dino, a fortnightly nonsense variety show. You can find us over on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Snapchat now, and on Spotify. <laughs> Dan's throwing his business at me. Quite literally. <laughs> uh, please like, subscribe, uh, tell your friends, tell your family, make them watch it, get little toothpicks and forge open their eyes and sew their eyelids to the top of their head so they have no but choice but to watch me murder the English language as I try and wrap it all up. Jesus. We'll be back next fortnight with some more stuff, probably from uh, Greenlight Comics, maybe from Japan again. Uh, Until then, be good, uh, persons. That's it. That's my my catchphrase. Be Be good.